welcome to the third ERD book talk on the new um, newest um, publication in the ERD Global Development Book Series. Um, just a few words before I introduce today's speaker. Um, ERD stands for the European Association of uh, Development Research and Training Institutes. My name is Julia Schöneberg and I work in the Bonn um, ERD Secretariat. Um, EAD is a Europe-wide network of institutes, of researchers, of students, um, all occupied and researching, working on the various disciplines in the field of development studies. Um, and this is also the rationale um, from which this, this newest volume um, on building development studies for the new millennium has come out. So basically thinking about um, exchanging, also contesting, challenging each other um, about the various perspectives. Um, a few words on the technical details of this. Um, we will have, after Rogelio's talk, we will have time for discussion and debate of questions. Um, so you're welcome to um, just um, switch on your video um, and your, your sound and um, directly talk to us and talk to Rogelio. Um, but if you're feeling shy, you're also very welcome to put the question in the chat box and we will um, also take it into the discussion. Um, also, I would like to make you aware that we are recording um, this talk, so um, it will be made available on the RD website and on YouTube. So should you feel um, uncomfortable with appearing in the video, then just please keep your video switched on. But without much further ado, um, I would like to introduce uh, Rogelio Madrueño Aguilar, who has taken the time to join us this afternoon. Welcome, Rogelio. And he is um, the co-author of the chapter on development studies in Spanish. Rogelio is a research fellow at the Ibero-America Institute for Economic Research at the University of Göttingen in Germany. And he's also a member of the Spanish Network of Development Studies, the RIDES uh, Network. His current research covers topics in economic growth, in global governance and policy coherence and economic development. Um, and he's also concerned with discourse analysis and development studies. So this afternoon, Rogelio will speak to us um, on his chapters and especially on the, obviously on the insights um, of this chapter on development studies in Spanish. Um, and he will draw out the long tradition of thought on development in Latin American countries in Spain and will um, conceptualize and take development studies in Spanish as a kind of response framework to the Western ideas of progress and development. So again, very welcome, Rogelio, and over to you. Okay, can you hear me? Yes, very well. Great. Uh, well, hello, everyone. Um, yeah, well, I, I want to just share my, my presentation. Let's see what is this here. And then it's here, there. So where is there? So yes. Okay. So uh, well, hello everyone. Um, first of all, uh, thank you, uh, Julia, and thank you to Eadi. I'm very happy to to be part of this uh, webinar series, with, uh, which opens the opportunity to to discuss a variety of key topics for development. And uh, based on this, I want to send my warmest thanks both to the uh, editors of the book that bring us here today. I encourage you to, to buy the book, to take a look at it. I'm, I'm sure you will enjoy it. And I want to thank in particular to Isabel, Elisabetta, Tina, and Susan, who, who made it possible, uh, but also to the Spanish uh, uh, Network of Development Studies, Redes, who, um, um, which also made possible the chapter I have written in collaboration with uh, Pablo Martinez Osés, who is uh, also a member uh, of Redes, is a Spanish philosopher, expert in political science and international cooperation. Um, well, I uh, just uh, said that it is crucial to encourage the debate uh, on the meaning of development studies in this 21st century especially in these days and these years when global uh, development 
has uh, become extremely complex. And as the famous uh, economist uh, Kate Roward has recently uh, pointed out, we are all now developing countries, suggesting the idea that all countries show a wide uh, gap between the fulfillment of uh, social needs and the ecological balance of the planet. And one question emerges out immediately. What can still be learned um, from the experience of uh, peripheral countries, um, in particular, uh, in this case, from the Spanish-speaking world? Do you think we have something to say? Uh, well, probably some of you would say no. And, and this is, well, it's quite not surprising because if you see um, this uh, graph, this chart of the schools of economic thought, for instance, the peripheral world is, is totally absent. And, uh, but uh, in this presentation, I would try to, to uh, change your opinion and justify my response by saying that uh, development studies in Spanish offers a rich experience because it has witnessed uh, an ongoing struggle to promote social and ecological justice. And in this presentation, I would like to, um, uh, to point out three uh, key ideas. Um, first, the idea of pluralism and periphery. Second, the, the ideas of structuralism and dependency. And third, uh, the issue of critique and construction. And I'm going to be very blunt here. In development studies is in a very good shape. It's more vibrant than ever, not only because um, the economic and political juncture of the region uh, in both sides of the Atlantic, but also because of the historical meaning of development for us which is also not an easy issue as well. Actually, a, a few uh, weeks ago, maybe you know this, the president of Mexico uh, made a statement where he wanted uh, the Spanish state to admit its historical uh, res responsibility for colonial abuse of indigenous um, people during the conquest. Uh, now that it's getting closer, the 500th anniversary of this historical event, more importantly um, was the fact that this would complement an apology of the Mexican state with Mexico's indigenous people. The response of the Spanish government was the rejection of the Mexican request on the basis that, on the basis that according to Spain, the conquest cannot be judged in the light of contemporary consideration. The consequence was uh, an issue that become a social media trend and was subject uh, of sharp debate among the experts and the elites. Of course, I, I don't want to, to open right now this line of discussion, but uh, we can do it later if you want. But I just want to be, or to, to, to be provocative and to put a distinctive example of how development debate has to some extent a clear colonial legacy and is still to some extent, a sensitive issue. And it is not a minor issue that Latin America and Spain shared strong links in world history. This uh, so-called encounter of two worlds opened the door to colonialism as a part of a global framework. Um, Miguel Leon Portilla, a very, very famous uh, Mexico uh, uh, scholar, uh, he has a, a bestseller. And, and in, in this bestseller, he uh, gives account of this encounter of two worlds, uh, but from a very engaging storyline. He offers the viewpoint of the defeated, which is actually the, the name of the book in Spanish. And his narrative is very useful because it provides an account of the encounter of two cultures, uh, two cultures through the lens of their indigenous people which is relevant and worthy. And if we draw a kind of a parallel with this approach, we can say that the role and evolution of development studies in Spanish have there to challenge the one-sided conventional narrative of development. Again, um, something very relevant in this process is the origin of a continuous tension between the notion of modernization 
and the notion of social and ecological justice. Uh, and this um, um, part of this uh, notion is uh, um, headed by the so-called dependencies. Well, the former, I mean, the, the notion of modernization provides an endless instrumental rationality, which means that the search for efficiency and profit at all costs is a sine qua non condition for progress. Uh, the later, the promotion of social justice, stresses on the contrary, the irrationality of modernization and the need to encourage a reflection on the human condition and the respect of human life. Of course, there is a quite fundamental problem with this tension because there is hardly an, um, an easy way out for countries and regions located in the situation of periphery. Any attempt to provide an alternative strategy to development always meet with the resistance from the advocates of modernization and efficiency at, uh, at different levels and at dif the different mechanisms. And the result has been a sort of a class struggle which at um, different points in history has prevented the emergence of national agendas in this region with the capacity to promote sustainable social cohesion and a drastic uh, reduction in poverty and social disclosure. Um, of course, the, it is clear that uh, these difficulties I am just saying are not as black and white and they are full of inconsistencies and interdependencies, but these dependencies um, were key in providing part of the foundation of the theoretical apparatus of development studies in Spanish. And um, here comes the idea of development studies in Spanish as a literature largely driven by a genuine pluralism. The understanding of the condition of underdevelopment covers uh, more than one discipline, either philosophy, sociology, economics, political science, history, anthropology, uh, international relations, etc. All of them trying to shed light of distinctive or multiple dimensions of the problem of development. They can share even some methods, information, knowledge, etc. More important is that evolution of development studies in Spanish in different strands of scientific uh, research provides the status of peripheral and heterodox. And I will go further on this. Uh, but we arrive here to the second point of my presentation. Development studies in Spanish has a strong association with structuralism and dependency theories. Actually, these uh, theories were born during the 50s and 1960s with a strong communalities. They are not the same, of course. They don't even have a common structure, but they have close identification and close familiarity. It must be said that in these years, the Latin American region implemented a variety of policies to revert backwardness through import substitution industrialization, which allowed the conditions for a rapid expansion. It was a very rich laboratory of ideas, which include the very famous idea of center periphery, um, among others. And this opened the door for a way of thinking that had not only tried to understand the peripheral role of, the, of Latin American and the Caribbean region in the world system, but also to provide solutions to overcome historical disadvantages. Um, and the consequence was the emergence of three main approaches. First, the Latin American economic um, structuralism provided by, by the CEPAL or the ECLAC, you know, this uh, United Nations Economic Commission for Latin America and the Caribbean, which is part of the UN. Um, this um, commission have played a kind of instrumental role for development studies in Spanish. Then we have um, the other two approaches. The first is a family of dependency theories, which were focused especially on the um, issue of exclusion. And, and then we have a second um, an approach or a second family, um, which belongs to the so-called theories of liberation, 
And here we find four complementary strands. Uh, the philosophy of liberation, the theology of liberation, the ethics and politics of liberation, and the pedagogy of the press. Um, and these theories were uh, particularly focused on the poor. Um, again, uh, I'm talking about years uh, where the expansion of CEPAL or an ECLAC uh, become the most influential regional institution of the developing world. And this was a part of a success story that has not been repeated in any other region of the developing world ever. In the case of the theories of dependency and theories of liberation, they were strongly connected with revolutionary and political movements, but also with social transformations in the region. Just remember that um, we are talking about very intense years in political and social resistance as well. Uh, and by saying this, I am not excluding Spain from my storyline. Interestingly, Spain emerges uh, in Spain emerges a similar movement as the Latin American structuralism with some ideas of the so-called dependencies, in particular in relation to the vital balance between human development and ecological balance. And the creator of this movement was uh, José Luis San Pedro, a prominent economist who became the pioneer of the new generation of um, development scholars in Spain. And this brings me to the third point I would like to highlight. Development studies in Spanish is not only critical, but also a, a constructive contribution to social sciences. Um, it seems to be that these uh, top narratives I have just uh, mentioned had a strong decline, especially during the 80s, when um, we lived the resurgence of the mainstream view of development. Actually, it seems as, as if these top narratives in development studies in Spanish were dead. And this is far from the truth. They have been producing continu continuously and trying to catch up and to adapt to the new realities. For instance, uh, in the times when inequality was not part of discussion in the international agenda, uh, Cepal already suggested the idea of approaches like adjustment with growth and growth with equity, uh, where the notion of socioeconomic sustainable change is an essential part. Another example is um, the capacity of these theories to influence overseas. Uh, here, contrary to what many scholars would think, the very foundation of new institutional economics uh, with uh, leading scholars like Asimoglu, uh, Robinson, North, have strong communalities with dependency theories. Um, similarly, the influence of dependency on, um, there is an influence of dependency on relevant sociological theories such as the world systems theory provided by Emmanuel Wallerstein and uh, Giovanni Arrighi. More recently, um, we find relevant uh, post-development narratives like Buen Vivir or Good Living. In, in Quechua is Alupi Suma Causai, which is very interesting because it's good living in community. A community that includes not only the relation with other humans, but the relation with the nature and even the, the universe. And this is part of this uh, so-called cosmovi cosmovision, cosmovision. And I, well, I'm sure you know better uh, this uh, theory than I uh, do, but, uh, and I can continue with different examples and contributions uh, of uh, development studies in Spanish. For instance, in the field of international cooperation, the importance of um, developing corporations with middle income countries, and mechanisms uh, such as South-South and Triangular Cooperation, or policy coherence for development, or in the field of philosophy, the notion of transmodernity, which is a very interesting um, approach that uh, seeks to overcome the construction of modernity by reconstructing history through the lens of the excluded and the condition um, of periphery. Well, and the list of examples is very long. You, you can find you can find much more in, in, in our chapter. Well, uh, summing up, development um, studies in Spanish was born 
from a multidimensional and plural perspective in order to, to face or to challenge the conventional idea of uh, development. Therefore, they are critical but constructive as well because they have provided key insights to understand the history of development from a real uh, global perspective, which includes um, both uh, the, perspective of the perspective of the center, but more important, the perspective of the periphery, in particular to those that are um, excluded and deprived. And this is important because any formula for success, or in other words, to deal with the challenges of the 21st century, inevitably um, requires a strong content of social justice and humanism, and uh, the capacity to listen and to accept the other, in particular the excluded. And development studies in Spanish opens up this possibility, is, could be a guidance or a mirror where we can uh, look at. So I will stop here and uh, we can have uh, questions or a dialogue. Many thanks for your attention. Thank you very much, Rogelio, for this uh, very concise uh, talk and, uh, and overview. And I think that we'll have many points for, for, for discussion. So I would um, open the floor um, and invite everyone um, to yeah, join, the, join the discussion, join the talk and not make it a, a monologue or a dialogue. So please feel free to, um, to join in. Um, as I said, um, just maybe indicate in the chat box and then we'll um, keep a list of speakers um, so we don't interrupt each other. So maybe to give everyone a few moments to think, I might start with the, with the first question to you, uh, Rogelio. Yeah, sure. I was wondering, um, because you already also mentioned um, the role of colonial legacies, um, and especially with regard to, to Spain, and um, why did you um, um, title your chapter with development studies um, in Spanish and not development studies, I don't know, maybe from the periphery or from Latin America or because in Spanish that would, from my understanding, include, you know, Spain, which is the, the colonial power and rather not the peripheral uh, power. So maybe you can say a few words on why you choose the title. Yeah, sure. Uh, well, the, the idea was to, to, to make a, a well, broad overview of, uh, of the literature of uh, development studies in Spanish. Mm -hmm. And uh, in doing so, well, we um, will try to make a sort of uh, um, historical um, um, well, evolution of these studies, and but um, also with a, with a very very important mandate. I mean, this this chapter is part of it is part of course of uh, of, um, of an institutional effort within within um, um, I mean our our network, and we didn't want to 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 take just a partial view of this study. We just wanted to to take a broad view. Of course, the, the, there is an important part of this study that connected with, um, with Latin America, um, especially because at some point of history uh, uh, where in Latin America there was a very vibrant uh, uh, or more visible um, um, way of, uh, of looking at, at what we were doing. Uh, in Spain, they they were having a, a dictatorship, and 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 so it was not not very visible visible what they were doing, but there were interesting connections with uh, this uh, um, um, literature or uh, um, provided by José Luis Ampedo, who actually is, it could be part of the part of the the, the, the same. Scholars, we are, they, they share a, a lot of income in, in, in their, in their, um, in their uh, in elaborations. And uh, um, so 
uh, the idea, as I said, is, is just try to take a broad view, with, and of course, to mention uh, the importance of uh, the legacy of, uh, uh, of colonialism. But in, in this case, it is not a central part of our our uh, chapter. It's just uh, actually we start with um, the um, evolution of Latin America uh, or, or perspective or, or theories, and then we make uh, um, a process or a, 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 a revisit uh, um, um, yeah, view of the of the literature in Spanish, uh, which connects much more with uh, a very also vibrant uh, literature of uh, that has been taking place in, in, in Spain. Um, and but of course I, I, I leave it that uh, right now out but uh but you can you can look at it in the in the chapter which is also very 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 interesting uh but in order to make this presentation uh, uh, mm -hmm. uh, more provocative I just wanted to, to start <laughs> with these issues okay so well everyone can see open um please um, feel free to to challenge Jorge or, or ask any questions. Maybe I, in the meantime, go with the second one. Um, because I don't think while in the chapter you refer to um, and the post post development and all these theories um, that um, also argue for alternatives to development rather than you know an alternative concept of development. Um, I was wondering, and I guess that links a little bit probably to your um, response to my previous question. But um, what role all the because there's the strong um, well, there's strong voices, strong authors in terms of decolonial um, theories, in terms of decolonial writings, if you talk about um, development studies, um, writing about the coloniality of Anibal Quijano, the coloniality of power, the connections of, of colonialism and capitalism. And then again, coming back to this idea of modernization, of growth, of prosperity, etc. So I was um, wondering where where you put this um, this whole uh, decolonial um, sphere. Yes. Yes. Um, yes. Well, I I would say that it was a very very difficult chapter to write because um, I mean the, the the literature is huge and. Mm -hmm. And actually, it was very, very uh, a real challenge, just because we also we 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 leave out uh, a lot of very famous uh, scholars, so, um, and and we need to well, at the end also because of editorial uh, issues, we need to, to shorten the chap the chapters. Uh, many many other ideas, uh, but we didn't include them. But uh, in in our um, um, well, in this chapter, what we made is like. Uh, uh, we'll try to, to, to map out the, the, the whole, the whole, uh, well, the different schools or the, or the, or the different, uh, ideas in this, uh, studies. And, um, so, and as, as you can, uh, as you can see in this, in this chart, we made this, um, um, these theories we provided this role of peripheral and heterodox view from the less heterodox to the more heterodox ones. And the less heterodox, as, as I just mentioned, is the, 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 the school of, uh, of, um, within the CEPAL, which were, as I said, just the most, the more instrumental part of, uh, or is the most instrumental part of these studies. And then we have the Spanish structuralism, which connects a lot with with uh, um, with Clark, and then we have all this issue of the financing theories and the issue of post development, which is in the in the in the well, after, well in this, in this uh, past, 
part of health development and feminist and ecological economics. And in this part, we have this recent uh, um, uh, theories about uh, the issue of, uh, of ecology and 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 um, uh, and Brandy Beer and uh, and all and all the out the authors that connect with this. Um, alternative paradigms of development, and um, so uh, as I said, it's uh, it's very it's it's very difficult to try to segment all all the the uh, the contributions, and but if, if we were able to map out the the the, the whole production of Latin America, um, I think that this is a very good. Uh, or, or a first uh, attempt to do it, and um, uh, so we also, as I, as I said, I we leave out an, um, also very empirical uh, exercise we made because we, we didn't. Uh, well, we also studied uh, the most important um, uh, magazines and, and journals in, in in Spanish in order to detect all these uh, theories, but. Uh, uh, we were just um, trying to make sure that uh, we included, if not all the authors, all the uh, well, the most important ideas of development studies in Spanish, but also uh, in this um, in responding paradigm, which included not only well economics, but it's going uh, deeper and deeper, uh, trying to. Uh, uh, to respond to even with issues of uh, transdisciplinary, which is also more connected with uh, contributions pr uh, provided by also this famous scholar Enrique Dussel, for instance, um, uh, which is part, of course, of the of the theories of liberation, mm -hmm. but it, um, make all these uh, new, uh, well, this very bunch uh, and colorful uh, group of um, of theories and, and schools, and we have at the, in, the, in the left side we have also this modern, uh, this uh, well, all the modern approaches that perhaps they do not connect completely with more critical views, uh, but they are also very interesting because they are also very instrumental um, tools to uh, make the well to provide better global governance. And, and they connect actually with uh, this uh, idea of uh, instrumentalism within um, within this um, way of thinking that connects also with um, this uh, uh, commission of the uh, of the United of the UN of yes in Latin America. So uh, answering your question, we we we. Do uh, 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 study the, the the issue of uh, when we build, I mean, practically we just we just mentioned just a bit, uh, but it was also, as I said, just impossible just to mm -hmm. uh, to capture and, and to and to go deeper into all of them because this is a well a huge a huge task. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> so, I mean, to what extent do you think this? Responding paradigm is taken adequately into consideration. If you, if, because you, in the in the um, start of your talk, you said you know you wanted to bring us um, this view from the Spanish-speaking literature or theories um, to our attention, because obviously it's not considered enough. Um, so what what would be the you know beyond your chapter now? To, to bring it more into into the discussion. Uh, what what would be my my well my, my, my sorry I I didn't understand it. Well, you you say you know that obviously you 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 frame this you know the the perspective you said you know the development studies in Spanish it has a very constructive yes mm -hmm. uh, critical yet constructive take and you say in the in this charge here you you map this this responding paradigm towards or in contrast to the paradigm of modernization. Um, so what would be the, you know, how to fill this gap if you say it's, 
it has the, con the, the constructive office, the theories have the constructive office to make, mm -hmm. but yet they are not taken in consideration enough. Is, or maybe I, I understand you wrong there. Uh, well, no. I, I, I mean, they, they, they have. Uh, uh, I think they have. A, they have made a lot of progress in, in order to to uh, yes to stress the idea of, and I would say in general, this uh, to well to provide this um, critical response to to conventional development. I mean. Conventional development uh, and I would say do not focus completely on, on issues of, of exclusion or, or at least well they do but the the tradition of, of uh, or the origin of development studies in Spanish was always there so and they have worked on this issue con continually con continuously and they have made progress on the, on, on, on this aspect. And uh, um, uh, but and the idea, of course, of these studies is also interesting is that they are not only part of a um, theoretical effort, but also a, pragma a pragmatic effort. So uh, because many of them they try to 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 work also uh, pragmatically with people. In order to to create uh, social transformations, on yeah, actually, but at the beginning, many of these uh, uh, theories, I mean, they were connected with revolutionary movements in, in, in some case. So, uh, and and now they are they make also um, make this transition, and if they are not taking any more. Um, let's say violent means they are they are uh, taking a uh, peaceful means but through um, 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 the uh, support of people uh, especially poor people are, are excluded in order to create social transformation from the bottom of of society, so actually the, the the many important transformations in, in Bolivia or in Ecuador at, at some point they they were they had uh, if you can take the, the theory of these movements they are somehow inspired by uh, many theories of of development in in, uh, in Latin America or or in Spain and. and 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 then and then we have this uh, yes uh, the, this bridge between uh, theory and and pragmatism that is important for I mean to face the challenge of the of the, of the well of this uh, well the, the new challenge of this of this century which has to be with uh, how we manage to uh, to create progress with uh well based on the respect of, of the of the ecology and the planet and and, 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 and i think the uh, <clears throat> latin america and they have already provided uh, examples of how to do that i mean the, the um, if we remember uh, evo morales i mean the, in bolivia uh, he came from uh, ecological struggle. I mean, they, based on this uh, um, protest about when they, they in Bolivia they wanted to pr privatize water, and there was a social movement there, and Evo Morales was part of this movement, and and so it was. And, and Evo Morales, they have also connection also with this with these uh, uh, the theories, and so. Uh, in, in, uh, in principle, much more, much more with, with indig indigenous, uh, of course, uh, uh, tradition. But um, uh, so, if we, if I could uh, extract some um, some lesson, is this this combination of theory and pragmatism that are helpful for, or, or could be helpful for 
for the challenge we have to face. Okay, everyone, everyone else, please don't, <laughs> don't let it be a dialogue. So everyone, is on, don't be shy. Um, everyone is invited to join us. Um, and you can ask a question or just make a comment. Um, so don't, please don't be shy. Hello, can I ask a question from Bombay? Yes, please, please, Hello. welcome. Yeah, hello. Yeah, it was a wonderful presentation. I was just wondering if you could define uh, post development and like what would be the role of Re European Union as far as uh, Spanish development is concerned, and also if you could throw some light on whether Marxism had any effect, you know, in your earlier analysis. Thank you. Thank you, Rajita. Well, the, the the second was about Marxism, and the first question. Uh, yeah, the first one was like, if you could uh, define what exactly is post-development, you know, when you're mentioning in your chart, and what would be the impact of the European Union uh, development policy vis-a-vis uh, -vis the, the Spain development? So how, how much would it, you know, be on the same page and how much would it differ? And I was just wondering in your earlier analysis where you have this main problem chart, uh, you haven't mentioned about Marxism at all. So do you feel that it had had no impact at all or was it not that much thank you yes um, well um well with um respect with the first we we made uh well in this chapter we we have also included the issue of uh, post uh, development thinking and we have included here um uh well uh uh, well, not only the the, the new Spanish uh, tradition uh, in, in terms of uh, this scholar, I will just mention uh, Jose Luis San Pedro, but also well the issue of uh, gender and and, and 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 development with a also uh, uh, a group of very interesting uh, and very vast group of uh, <coughs> of feminist scholars and. Um, uh, and also, well, different views within, within philosophy, with, uh, such as um, uh, this um, also very famous uh, philosopher, uh, female philosopher uh, Adela Cortina. Uh, so we were just trying to, to, to give some uh, examples of uh, uh, scholars, so uh, people could uh, go directly to, uh, to to them and try to. Uh, to broaden their their uh, their view of what uh, how development means in um, uh, for this uh, for this author, well for well for development stories in Spanish, but through these authors, um, and then well of course I, I, I yes I, I well in this uh, chart I, I we didn't mention at all Marxism, but it it, it is very very important uh, because at least. Um, in uh, I mean all these theories I mean they have a strong influence uh, of well first Marxism uh, in relation to to all dependency theories uh, of yes also uh, structuralism has uh, influence of Marxism but not so. Uh, is strong. They also have um, influence from uh, uh, Keynesianism or uh, well, basically these these two. Uh, at, at that time, Keynes, Keynes or Keynesianism was was very important, and and as I said, it's it's, it's a much more instrumental um, tool, and they they just want not to to adopt more not only the critical the critical part. Of capitalism, but to provide solutions, and one of the solutions in this, in, at that point was to create uh, structures and, and policies to to um, provide dynamism in, in Latin American and uh, countries. And but as I said, uh, Marxism for all dependency theories is uh, crucial, and of course. As I said, it is um, different different ways of 
of um, reading marks and <clears throat> because um, and there are a lot of critics i mean we can we can uh, uh, well mention authors like uh, i don't know marini or or even uh, well even do so but uh, but at, at some point they, they have had a, a process of evolution or or, or or they have revisited the the, the way of thinking marx and they have um, tried to to polish the the, the, the failures or, or the errors they have at some point in their in their theory because, because these theories at some point had a lot of critique and they said this is not the way uh, i mean or yes the way it is uh well it doesn't explain uh what uh the the, the uh, uh, structural problems of, of the of the of of these countries in in, in, a, in a general way but uh so uh these authors just try continue working on on their uh, read on on, on, on the reading on Marx and then try to to adapt and try to to uh, provide better uh, insights about their choice and that, that's why I'm, I was just saying that um, the new um, transdisciplinary uh, well the new um, transmodernity approaches they they continue um, uh, working on Marx but from a very uh, well more interesting. Uh, or more uh, valuable view, which I think is important to well for other regions to to know it and to and to consider because there is a dialogue also from um, not only Latin America but in different in different regions in Africa in Asia of with of this yes this uh, theories of liberation they have um, been exported to other centers and they have even uh, for instance. Uh, great conference or big conference uh, in order to discuss uh, all these all these issues and in, di in different in different fields not only uh, economics but also the gender and, and migration and all these all the problems of uh, development of, of the developing world and uh, so well marxism is important <laughs> uh, and the, the other question was uh, the issue of uh, the European policies, or I, I, I forgot the last one. Yeah, oh, oh, I, I was asking about uh, whether you know the European Union policy of development uh, would it like uh, be in the same page as the uh, development policy of Spain, or is there a conflict? How how much uh, does it overlap, or would you have some issues of you know differences? Uh, well, there. Are, uh, well, I, I. Well, in this part, we we, we didn't work on that, uh, so I I I don't have a an, an, a concrete uh, uh, answer to to that question. But I mean, the the there are actually well um, differences in, in, in approach in terms of um, of. Um, uh, in trade and, and uh, yes, but uh, because Spain belongs to, to to the to the European Union and and Latin America, well, they, they are facing um, different problems that are uh, much more connected with uh, with a well um, very old problem of how they can continue uh, getting industrialized and and. Trying to um, uh, get rid of, of this, uh, uh, how, how do you call this? Um, um, well, problem of dependency on uh, on commodities. So that's fine. Yes. Globalization. <laughs> Globalization. Uh, well, globalization. It is uh, well. It is also also. Uh, oh, 
also well very very broad issue and uh but this this Theories, I would say that uh, they have they have very critical view of um, of globalization based on the on the idea of what uh, financial uh, globalization has meant for for the developing world and, and for the region. And it has uh, caused, of course, uh, or bring uh, important um, issues in terms of uh, trading because the region at some point. Um, had a lot of benefit from from um, commodities, which made uh, the many countries to 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 make uh, considerable progress, uh, especially during the mid nineties or or on the the beginning of uh, two thousand. Um, but um, the issue of financial globalization. As at the end, uh, now in a, in a, as, as a global problem, a problem has affected all. Uh, all, and now I think the 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 globalization right now for Latin America means how they um, uh, deal with the issue of uh, of China, um, and uh, especially South America. And uh, in the case of uh, Central and North America, how they deal uh, with the U.S. And, and and Trump. But now globalization is it is more the discussion of how we redirect or how we how this how these countries redirect their their economies in a in a process of kind of a, a deglobalizing world in terms of. Um, um, the economy is trying to, uh, or the three, the three uh, big economies of the world: China, U.S., and, um, and 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 Russia, for instance, how they are uh, trying to to create more national or uh, and regional levels of influence for their own <coughs> uh, profit and. So for the region, it's important how how we or how the, how these countries can be uh, uh, have a, a a solution within within this uh, new framework. And um, but I think that's uh, well something that can be uh, be extensive for all the, all the, all the countries in, 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 or in the developing world, as also for Africa. And for, and, and for Asia, but uh, for South America, as I said, is how important how they how in, in terms of globalization how they deal with with China because they have important important um, relation with them. Um, or China is impo uh, considered that South America is important, and in Central America and the U.S., how they deal with with the U.S. Thank you very much. Thank you. I think if there's one more question, we have time for one more. Otherwise, I would thank Rogelio for his time um, and the very interesting insights. And if you want to read more, um, you're first of all welcome to read Rogelio's blog post on the ERG um, blog, but also, of course, um, delve more deeper into the issue by reading his chapter in the ERG book. And you can find all information on that on the ERG web website, which is ERG.org. Um, as mentioned before, we will make uh, the talk available on YouTube, where you will also find um, the previous talks of other authors of the book. So um, in, we will gradually build on that. So in the end, we will have a virtual version of the book in addition to the um, readable version. So please, if you're interested, follow that. And um, with that, thanks again, Rogelio, and thanks everyone um, who attended. Okay.
I wish everyone a very good afternoon and hope to see you again next time. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye-bye, thank you.